In this lesson, we'll jump right in and begin using Photoshop to create our very first project. All right, before we get started, I'd just like to let you know that Digital Tutors would like to say thank you to iStock Photo and the artists Spiderstock, FMNG, Mad Gickle, Iconogenic, Stallman, Double P, Alvarez, and Jerry Schiller for their images that were used in this series of lessons. You can access these same images and thousands of others by accessing your exclusive Digital Tutors iStock discount at the following site. All right, if this is your first time to open and use Photoshop, then welcome. Photoshop is truly an amazing application. It can be used from anything, uh, anything from digital painting to photo manipulation to photo enhancement and to even web design and the creation of graphics that are going to be used on the web. Now, obviously, those are very specific usages of this application, and we're probably a long way from being able to do anything of that sort just yet. So, logically, the the place to start with this course would be to teach you the very basics. How do we get around Photoshop? What are the very basic tools and workflows? Now, that's all necessary information, but that's not a lot of fun to start out with. So, I tell you what let's do. Instead, let's start off with a project. If you look inside your project files, we're going to look for the Lesson 2 folder. And you can see it right here. Inside that folder, you should see this O2 underscore begin file. Now, if you don't have Photoshop open, you can double click on this file and it'll launch Photoshop for you. If you've already got Photoshop open like I do here, then you can either double click on it to open it inside the Photoshop interface or you can just click and drag it in. We'll just do that. All right, great. So you can see that this photograph is a picture of some mushrooms in a forest. Now, any time that I see a photograph like this, it always reminds me of the movie Alice in Wonderland and the really vibrant colors and, and just beautiful imagery that was inside that movie. So, let's see if maybe we can recreate some of the, the imagery or maybe at least the colors in this photograph that were present in that movie. So, uh, now, the first thing I always do when I create a photo manipulation is I come in here and I duplicate the background layer. So let's bounce over here to the right. We're going to look for the layers panel. Now it may, your interface may look something like this. You may have it down here. All you need to do is click on that layers tab right there and you'll be able to see the contents of that layer or that panel rather. If you absolutely can't find it over there on the right, then come over here to the window drop down and find layers right there. And you also notice that there's a keyboard shortcut of F7 uh, right out here to the next to it. So you can hit that as well. Now, uh, when I say that I duplicate the background layer, the reason I do that is because I never want to destroy the original pixels in an image. I really like to focus on non-destructive workflows because if we destroy these pixels, it's going to be really hard to get them back the way they are right now. So uh, let's come over here and you'll notice that I have my background layer selected here. Now, to copy this layer, to create a copy of it, I'm going to hold the control key on my keyboard and hit the letter J. And notice what happens here. We get a new layer on top of that there, and it says layer 1 next to it. Now, there's also a little thumbnail out next to each one of these layers. And if you look at it close enough, you'll see that it's a very small version of this image out to the left. So essentially, we've got two copies of that image here, one on this layer and one on the background layer. Now, what you need to know about layers really briefly is that layers work just like a stack of paper. The background layer is going to be the last layer in the stack. So everything above it gets stacked on top of it. The topmost layer would be the top piece of paper on the stack. So everything above it is uh, stacked on top here. And this will probably make a lot more sense once we get a few more layers going here. But now that we have created this copy, I feel safe about going forward and working on this photo manipulation. So uh, let's come down here. We're going to look for this little button right here. It uh, looks like a little piece of paper with the corner folded. This is going to create another new layer. So with my layer 1 selected, let me go ahead and click on that. And we're going to create layer 2 here. Now there's a difference in the thumbnail uh, next to layer 2 uh, compared to layer 1. You'll notice there's a little gray and white checkered pattern here next to layer 2. 
This is an empty layer. We didn't make a copy of anything when we created this layer, so Photoshop is telling us it's empty by giving us what's known as a transparency grid here. You can see that grid here again with the gray and white checkerboard pattern. Anytime there's transparency in Photoshop, it's represented by that gray and white transparency grid. So uh, now with this new layer selected, what I'd like to do is I'd like to come up here now, choose the select drop down. And we're going to go for this load selection option right here. Now I know we don't know what selections are just yet. We don't know how to create them. So I've gone ahead and created one in, in advance for you here. If you notice here, there's a couple of different drop downs in the load selection dialog. We have one for document and one for channel. Document should be the exact same name as this document name we're working on. And we want to come down here to channel and drop that down and choose mushrooms. Let's go ahead and hit OK. All right, now notice what happens here. We get this little white dashed outline around all the mushrooms. This is the selection I created in advance for you. Now you'll notice here that that selection appears to be moving. Uh, you see that it looks like it's uh, moving around the contour of the mushrooms. Some people refer to this as marching ants, but this is how Photoshop uh, visually interprets or visually displays a selection. Now again, we'll talk more about this in an upcoming lesson, but for right now, what I'd like to do is introduce you to another new element here in Photoshop. Again, it's uh, something that's going to help you pre help prevent you from destroying pixels. So we're going to create a mask based on this selection that we've just made. So with this layer 2 selected, let's come down here, and now we're looking for this gray rectangle with a white circle in it at the bottom of the Layers panel. We'll go ahead and click on that button. And notice that we've created a mask here for this layer. The selection is gone, but we've added a new thumbnail here. And if you notice here, there's some information inside it. You can see that if you look closely enough at it, the mushrooms appear to be white, and everything else around the mushrooms appears to be black. So really quickly, what you should know about a mask is that areas that are black in a mask are hidden. Areas that are white in a mask are revealed. Now, again, we're going to talk more about masking in an upcoming lesson, so don't worry about that for right now. Let's actually shift our attention now to the background and foreground around the mushrooms. So we're going to save this layer for uh, here in just a moment. Let's come down and select layer 1 here. Now, what I'd like to do is, is come in here and maybe darken and remove a lot of this extra color from around the mushrooms, really shifting our attention to the mushrooms in this scene. So uh, the way I'd like to do that is by creating an adjustment layer. We can create that here by clicking on this black and white circle in the lower center of the layers panel. And a little menu is going to come up. We're going to go for black and white. Now notice as soon as I select that here, it's going to bounce us over to this Adjustments panel. Now the Adjustments panel uh, has a lot going on, lots of sliders, lots of buttons. Don't worry about all those right now. I'm going to uh, just press one button inside this panel. We're going to press this little button right here. It looks like a little pointer finger with a couple of arrows next to it. Now this button is going to allow me to adjust how the black and white values are distributed throughout this image. What I'm going to be able to do here, notice my mouse cursor looks like an eyedropper. What I'm going to be able to do is click here and drag either to the left or to the right and actually make the image darker or make it brighter. So let's go ahead and say I want to darken the foreground area here. I'm going to go ahead and click on sort of this middle value right here. And if I click and drag to the right, notice my mouse cursor changes. And notice the values are getting brighter here. We're actually making more competing values with the mushroom, so we don't want to brighten that up. I'm going to leave my mouse click down, and let's drag this instead to the left. And we're going to just drag those values down some here. And we'll just drop them. I'm going to drop them in right about there. Now I'm going to come over here. Let's click in this dark area, maybe drag it to the left a little bit too. And maybe we click over here on a mushroom and drag those to the right, just to brighten the mushrooms up some. All right, that's looking pretty good for right now. I'm pretty happy with this black and white, excuse me, black and white result. So uh, at this point, let's go ahead and jump back over to the layers panel and look at what we just did. You can see here that we've created this adjustment layer, and everything below it is being affected by it. You can see here we can hide that by clicking that little eyeball. So you can see that the layer one and the background layer are being uh, adjusted by this black and white adjustment layer. Now this is great and uh, 
really going to do well for us, but we need to add maybe a little bit of color back into this. Maybe we want to add a blue tint to it, a very desaturated dark blue. Let's come in here, add yet another adjustment layer. I'm going to click on that button again, and I'm going to come up to the very top and choose Solid Color. Now after I do that, you're going to notice that this Color Picker dialog comes up. Lots of buttons and uh, options here. Don't worry about that. Let's go ahead and focus on this strip in the center. This is the Hue Strip. This is where we're going to select our Hue. So we'll click and drag this up to kind of a bluish color here. Maybe right around in there. You can see the preview on the left changes as we drag that up. And here we can choose both a value and a saturation level of this color. Obviously to the right is going to be more saturated, to the left is going to be more desaturated. And we can decrease the value by moving down in this box. So we can click and we can set a circle. Let's go ahead and click somewhere over in here, maybe kind of a desaturated blue right about there. That looks OK. And we'll hit OK on that. All right, now we've got a problem. You can see that the imagery behind this, or actually rather underneath this adjustment layer, has disappeared. We can't see it anymore. Well, how can we bring it back? How can we just have this blue influence what's underneath it in color and not completely hide it? Well, we can change the blend mode for this layer. Blend modes are right here in this little drop down that says normal at the top of the layers panel. I'm going to go ahead and click that button there. And I know that's going to jump up out of the screen here, but the third option down from the top is called multiply. Let's go ahead and choose that option here. And you can see now our mushrooms have actually come back. We can actually kind of see some of them around. Uh, you can see kind of that rough contours of those here, sort of like that. Now, because we can see those now, I'm looking at that, and because that multiply blend mode is actually uh, sort of adding that color to the, th the layers underneath it, I'm looking at that and it looks a little bit purple. Maybe I want to change that blue. All we need to do is double click on that little color swatch right there in the layers panel. We can come back in here and maybe drag that slider in the hue strip bar down just a little bit. Maybe so that looks a little more blue in color instead of purple. And then let's hit OK on that. That looks a little bit better to me. Now, obviously we have a little bit of a problem though. Remember I said that we wanted these mushrooms to be a very fluorescent coloration. We really want to put a lot of focus on those and really what we've done here is we have made them black and white and now we've tinted them blue. Well, what can we do to actually bring the mushrooms back? Well, I tell you what, in the next lesson we're going to pick up where we're leaving off here and we're going to continue working on this small project and we're going to begin shifting our attention to the mushrooms in the image.